Okay, welcome back to this next session of Living Room Lessons. Lockdown Lessons. Living Room Lockdown Lessons. Yeah, we'll keep working on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through a couple of example questions again, uh, this time centered around Boyle's Law. So what we're sometimes asked to do is take one set of data and move it from one depth to another depth and work out what that outcome is going to be. So if you just bear with us for two seconds, I'm going to write some questions up and then we'll get started. Okay, so we'll kick this off with a little bit of terminology. These questions will often refer to something being a flexible container, a balloon, or maybe even your lungs. They're all basically the same thing. And what that thing is, it's a container full of gas that will expand as you release pressure and will compress as you apply pressure. We also have an inflexible container or a scuba cylinder, basically the same thing, which is the opposite to the flexible container as you would expect, meaning that that container will not compress and it will not expand as you apply or release pressure on it. So using that in mind, we'll take a look at this question right now. A balloon is filled with 60 liters of air at 30 meters of seawater. What will be the approximate volume of the balloon if it is taken to 50 meters? So we're gonna take a known volume of air and we're gonna take it from one depth to another depth. So how do we do this? We don't just take it straight from that depth to this depth. We've got to apply another simple formula to that. That formula is we've got to take it on holiday. What do I mean by that? You get on an airplane, what does the airplane do? It has to go up before it comes down. So that's exactly what we're gonna do with the gas volume. So we have 60 liters at 30 meters of seawater. So at 30 meters of seawater, we have six zero liters. Okay, so it's gonna go on vacation. It's gonna go up. So we're gonna take 60 liters up. If we apply logic to this, it's a balloon, which means it is a flexible container. So it will expand and compress according to the pressure. So logic dictates that a balloon, as you release pressure on it, will expand as you take it up. So it's gonna get bigger. 60 liters to the surface is gonna get bigger. How much bigger? Four times, because that's where it's coming from. It's coming from a pressure of four atmospheres, so it will get four times bigger. So how do we make a number bigger? We multiply it. What do we multiply it by? The pressure. So 60 multiplied by four is 240. So by the time this gets to the surface, it will be 240 liters. That's part one. Now the plane comes in to land, which is us taking it back down to its new depth. The new depth in the question is 50 meters, which is right here, six atmospheres. So we take the 240 and we're gonna go down, down to 50 meters. So 240 liters of gas, what's gonna happen as you take that down? It's gonna compress. Remember, it's a flexible container. So it's gonna get smaller. How much smaller? It's 50 meters, which is six atmospheres. So it's gonna get six times smaller. How do we make a number smaller? We divide it. So 240 divided by six is 40. And that's the answer to our question. Okay, so always remember, take it on holiday first. Bring it up to the surface, take it back down, no matter what the value is. Okay. So if you give us a second, what I'll do is I'll rewrite the board with some different values and then we'll work that question out just for a bit of extra practice. Okay, and there it is. 
I've just rewritten the board and put in some different values. That's something you can do yourself at home as well. Just change those values just to give you that repetitive practice at answering the questions, okay? So we're saying this time a balloon is filled with 14 liters and it lies in 60 meters of seawater. What will be the approximate volume of the balloon if it's taken to 10 meters? So we've flipped that around. Instead of going from shallow to deep, we're going from deep to shallow because it doesn't matter if we apply the same logic to it. Okay, so what's the first thing we've got to do is we have to take our volume, which is 14 liters, and put it at 60 meters. So 60 meters, we have 14 liters. Okay, now if you remember the, the concept of this is it's gonna go on holiday, so it has to take off before it can land, which means it's gotta go up before it goes back down. We're gonna take the 14 liters all the way up to the surface. Now it's still a balloon, so what's gonna to happen to that volume is it's going to get bigger, okay? How much bigger? It's gonna get seven times bigger because it's coming from a pressure of seven atmospheres. So. It's going to be 14 multiplied by 7 by the time it gets to the surface. So we go all the way up to the surface and we end up with 98 litres as it gets there. Okay. Okay, that's only part of the journey. We're at the surface. Now what we've got to do is we've got to bring it back down to the new depth, which is 10 meters in this case. So we have 98 liters at the surface. We've now got to take it down. So we're taking it down to 10 meters. So it's going to get smaller, okay? Because the pressure is going to act on it. How much smaller is it going to get? It's going to get two times smaller because that's the pressure there. So 98 divided by two is 49 and that is your new answer okay so very basic concept very quick to get your head around whatever the volume is take it up to the surface and then bring it back down to its new depth okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a different style of question that falls under the same category and it's to do with rates of breathing okay so just give us a minute I'll get that one written up for you all right, here we go. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use the same methodology, but apply this to a diver's breathing rate, okay? So in the previous questions, what we've looked at is how a volume of gas will expand and compress as pressure is increased or decreased. But now we've kind of got to flip that on its head, okay? So again, like I said before, we apply a bit of logic here. So we'll look at the question first of all. A diver has an air consumption rate of 60 liters per minute at 10 meters of seawater. If all factors but depth remain unchanged, what will be the diver's new consumption rate at 60 meters? Okay, so we know how much they breathe here, but how much will they breathe there based on that consumption rate? So as with the previous section, what we have to do is go on a holiday. Okay, so we've got to bring it up to take it down. We also have to think about this logically as well. If you are breathing 60 liters here, do you expect to be breathing more gas or less gas as you ascend, okay? Logic dictates you're actually going to breathe less at the surface because there's less pressure, okay? So what we've got to do is put in your value. So we're breathing 60 liters at 10 meters, so 10 meters, we are breathing 60 liters per minute. Now, as we've just said, when we go up to the surface, we would expect to breathe less there, not more. So we want a smaller number, not a bigger number. How do we make a number smaller? We divide it. So we're gonna divide 60 liters, but by what? Well, by two, because that's where we are we're under two times the atmospheric pressure and we're going all the way to the surface. So it's gonna be twice as small. So 60 divided by two gives you 30. So we bring it up to the surface, which gives us 30 liters per minute. And now we have to take it back down. 
we're going down to 60 meters. So we're going to take the 30 down to 60. And the pressure there is seven times. So would we expect to breathe more gas as we go deeper? Yes, logically speaking, that's what happens. It takes seven times as much gas to fill your lungs down there as it does at the surface. So how do we make the 30 liters bigger? We multiply it. We multiply it by seven because that's where we're going. So 30 multiplied by seven is 210. So 210 liters per minute will be your breathing rate once you reach depth. And if we think about this logically, as we look through that, it makes sense. I'll breathe less as I go up and more as I come back down. Okay, makes sense. What I'll do now is I'll rewrite the board with some new values, same sort of example, just so we can build a bit of repetition in there. Give us a second. Okay, and there we are. So what I've done is I've changed the question up slightly. We're still talking about an air consumption rate, but instead of giving it in liters, I've put it in bar, okay? I've put it in pressure because it doesn't matter. Okay, we still answer the question the same way. So the diver has an air consumption rate of four bar per minute at 20 meters of seawater. If all factors but depth remain unchanged, what will be the diver's consumption rate at 30 meters? Okay, so what will it be at 30 meters? So what we do as always is we put in the data. So we do four bar per minute at 20 meters of seawater. So at 20 meters, we breathe four bar per minute. Okay, so that's how much we're consuming there. Now, as always, we're gonna go on holiday, so the plane's gotta go up before it can come down. So we take that four bar to the surface. Logically, are we gonna breathe more gas or less gas at the surface? We're gonna breathe less. So we need to make this number smaller. How much smaller? Three times smaller, because that's where it's coming from. Okay, so we do four bar divided by three, which gives us at the surface a gas consumption rate of 1.3 reoccurring bar per minute. So this is the surface. What do we do now? We have to take that down to the new depth, which is 30 meters of seawater. So we're coming here. So we're gonna bring this down to 30 meters. Are we expecting to breathe more gas or less gas per minute down there? More, there's more pressure. It's gonna take more gas to, to fill those lungs. How much more? Four times as much. So how do we make 1.3 a bigger number? We multiply it, we multiply it by four because that's where we're going to. So 1.3 multiplied by four gives you 5.3 bar per minute. So you can see we've had four examples of questions here based around Boyle's law, where all we have to do to answer them is go on holiday, okay? Take it up to the surface, before you bring it back down to its new depth. And then just apply that little bit of logic in between. Do I expect to see a bigger number or a smaller number where I'm going? And then that helps you know whether you divide or whether you multiply. Okay, so that's it for this session. Um, maybe if you enjoyed it, you can tune in for the next one and we'll see you soon.